Hi, I'm George, and boy, did we have a good weekend launching the Horizon rocket. Oh yeah, and welcome to part 18 of the Horizon series. So uh, the fixes we did to the rocket seem to have worked, uh, and the rocket behaved itself. Uh, we did two launches on two separate days. Uh, the first launch was at 1000 PSI, our highest launch pressure to date, and a higher pressure still on the second day. Yeah, I know, blah, 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 blah. Let's go have a look at it. Here we're in Mullaly, New South Wales Rocketry's high power launch site. It was quite a bit windy on the day at around 25 kilometers an hour. The wind was probably caused by the huge number of flies flapping their wings. Here we're connecting the release mechanism to the launch pad. We first start the altimeter and the onboard camera. And then the nose cone goes on and it also gets screwed down. When that's done, we stand up Charlie with the guide rail. And attach it to the launcher base. With cameras rolling, we retreat back to a safe distance. We pressurize the rocket slowly to keep the heat down until we get to our target pressure. Here Paul is standing by ready with the manual override lines in case we need to abort the launch. We're launching in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, go! The rocket drifted just over a kilometre away from the launch site. Ryan was able to measure the distance with the drone. What did it say? 20? 2715? No, 2775. 2775. <laughs> We're right, good. And here's the ultimate plot of the flight. So we were pretty happy about that because the performance of the rocket was actually better than what we were expecting. Now I know these flights are going to be compared to UCT's amazing flights from four years ago. Uh, I think it was to 2,723 feet. Uh, now technically they're both water rockets and Horizon did fly higher, uh, but we also did not build and fly our rocket to the same competition rules that UCT flew theirs. To the best of our knowledge, these two Horizon flights were the world's highest water rocket flights to date. 
Uh, now, there's always the chance that there are teams out there that are flying to higher altitudes that we're just not aware of. I've left some links in the description to UCT's uh, amazing efforts from those four years ago if you wanted to find out more about them and the competition. Anyway, let's crank up the pressure a little bit and let's see where we can get to. We were back at the launch site early the next morning to set up before the wind picked up. The rocket was filled with two litres of water and a little bit of shampoo. Then we slid the guide rail over the top of it. It's a lot easier to do it here on the table than out at the launch pad. It's not in yet. The rocket's then locked into the release mechanism. No, it's in. And then carried out to the launch pad. We also switched to the Stratologger CF altimeter for this flight. Once everything was armed, the rocket went back up onto the launch pad base. The wind this time was a lot calmer. We took about six minutes to fully pressurize the rocket. 11.50. Okay, arm um, for launch. We're launching in five, four, three, two, one, go. Bye-bye. Oh. Oh. I see. I don't see it. I don't see it. There it is, shoots out. Nice. Oh, there it is. Oh, yeah. And here's the launch from a few different angles. With the lower wind, the rocket only drifted about half a kilometre downrange. Let's hear it. Three, one, five, five, three thousand one hundred two. We did it. And here's the Stratologger altimeter plot of the flight. So we were pretty happy with that performance of that rocket because it was a lot higher than what we were expecting. With these two flights out of the way, we can now move on to uh, building the launcher and also the first stage. If you're considering building water rockets at this end of the hobby, uh, I cannot stress enough how dangerous high pressure air can be. Uh, it's not only the rocket, but also your launch equipment and test equipment that has to be able to handle these pressures. It's essential that your equipment has safety backups wherever possible. So please be careful. In the next video, we're going to do a bit of an analysis of these two flights. We're going to have a look at the numbers in detail and how they compare to simulations. Uh, we're also going to have a look at some interesting observations. Anyway, that's all for this week. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. Yeah, I think it's still recording.